Today I'm going to show you how to create a natural sounding plucked sound. I'm only going to use two modules, Impulse and Resonator. So this is a basic sound in Plasmonic, but it makes a really great starting point for more elaborate sounds. And I'm going to give you some tips that can really bring your sounds to life. Starting from Plasmonic's Initialize preset. Today we'll just be using the Impulse and Resonator modules. So I'm going to turn off the ladder filter. So we just have Resonator and Impulse. As you can hear, this is already a basic plucked string sound. And it's not bad, but it's not terribly interesting. But I'm going to show you how to make interesting things with this. The way this works is Impulse produces a short, noisy sound, and this makes a resonator ring. Uh, if I bypass resonator, we can hear what Impulse is doing. This is a sample of um, tapping on the bridge of a classical guitar. So it sounds kind of like a pluck but with no real pitch. Um, in the menu of Impulse, you can select different, different impulses. They're not terribly interesting by themselves, but they're meant to be used with the resonator. Looking at Impulse's parameters, we have Transpose. Uh, we have Pitch Tracking. I'll just turn this up to 12. Okay. And we also have tone. Tone is basically crossfade uh, between samples. And Most of the samples are arranged so that at low values it's soft and at high values it's loud. And as you can see, tone is by default assigned to velocity. So this provides an easy way to get a natural sort of dynamic response. Now let's make things more interesting. We'll turn on resonator. Okay, that sounds quite different. Okay, now if we just play with Impulse's parameters. Play with pitch tracking. tone. I'm going to turn velocity off. And to do that, you right click on a parameter. Anytime you want to change the modulators assigned to a parameter, you, you right click it and I'll turn velocity down. And you can see you have the actual parameter at the top here. I'm going to put velocity back because I think we want that. And if we try some different impulses, I'm going to put it back on the default classical. Resonator can be thought of as a simple model of a string. And let's take a look at its parameters. First, we've got these um, input selector switches that choose which of the four source modules is going through it. And right now, we're just using impulse. That's all we're going to use today. You can also use the noise generator or um, either of the two oscillators. This is quite different. If you're going to use one of the oscillators, 
turn its volume down a lot before you do it because it'll probably honk at you. You could do really cool things with the oscillators, but it's that's kind of another subject. Uh, today I'm just going to focus on using impulse and resonator. I'll do another video with the oscillators. We can also feed the output of the ladder filter like this or put the resonator through the ladder filter, but we're not gonna use ladder filter today. That's another subject. So there are lots of possibilities in terms of routing. So let's look at the parameters of the resonator. We've got transpose. Resonance, this is probably the most important parameter in resonator. It determines how long it will ring. Turn it all the way down, it's really short. Turn it up. Now when you get to 100%, at that point it basically will sustain more or less permanently. Um, if you turn above 100, it will self-oscillate. This opens all kinds of interesting possibilities, especially if you turn saturation up, but it'll be another um, subject for another video. High frequency damping is extremely important. Um, when damping's turned down, sound is real bright. Turn it up and it becomes more damped. So high frequencies get eaten up faster. Sounds more um, guitar-like. Now on the left side, we have in position. Imagine you're plucking a, the strings of a guitar and you're plucking closer or farther away from the bridge. This is similar to the effect of in position. So I'm going to turn it up all the way. This would be like playing close to the bridge. And that would be more like playing in the middle of the string. Now, a similar effect is output position. This would be similar to pickup position on an electric guitar. So these two parameters, um, they can be subtle, but they have an important effect on the sound. Saturation. I'm going to turn damping down. In this context, the short impulse making resonator ping, saturation will make it um, emphasize the attack. If I turn it all the way off, it sounds a little clinical, a little sterile. So I always like to have a little bit of saturation on my plucked sounds. Now if I want a real bright, clear, sustaining sound, I might turn it all the way down. changes the attack quite a bit. Then we've got frequency shifting. This will change the ratio of the harmonics. So it will make the harmonics expand. And this is useful to make inharmonic sounds. It becomes more metallic and bell-like. Sort of, sort of like a ring modulator. This can make very pretty bell sounds. Sort of like a vibraphone. And then we're back to the string. Okay, and finally, mod. Mod is dynamic modulation of some internal parameters. 
turning it off, it sounds a little academic. Turn it up a little bit, and it adds adds kind of a noise to the um, attack. I'm going to turn high frequency damping down. You like that? It sounds real pure. Then it gets more noisy. And at high value. Okay, usually for plucked string sounds, I add just a little bit of it. It has a dynamic effect. It, it will sound different if the sound is loud or soft. That's maybe a little more than I want. Little goes a long way. Now, how can we make this better? Let's try some modulation. First thing I notice is that every note sounds more or less the same, which is not the case of a real acoustic instrument. One thing I like to do is add, I will right click on input position to open the modulation setup. And I'm gonna add a little bit of randomness to this. You know, if you're a guitarist and you try to play the exact same sound repeatedly, you know it's not really possible. And adding a little bit of randomness to the input position is one way to get that kind of an effect in plasmonic. Now, the decay of the sound is kind of featureless. So let's try applying an ADSR to output position. So again, I will right click output position and we'll apply ADSR B to this. Okay, I will turn on ADSR B. And okay, that's way too much. There we go. That's the kind of effect I want. That's much prettier, I think. Of course, we can vary this. That's way too much. Now, you can adjust the curve for each parameter. Okay, that won't have much enough. Okay. So we have a linear curve. It will be the same all the way down to the end of the envelope, or we could have an exponential kind of curve. There'll be more velocity in the attack, more modulation in the attack. Okay. And attack's not really doing anything because it's so short. Okay, that's kind of dumb. So this can be dramatic or it can be subtle and it makes the decay much more interesting, I think. And we could also control the ADSR depths. I will right click on this. We could control this with velocity. So if we look at output position, if I play soft, you notice there isn't much um, modulation happening. And if I play hard, then there's a lot more modulation. It has, it has a more audible effect. Okay, so that's becoming much more um, dynamic, much more expressive, I think. 
I also like to apply LFO to the output position. Right click on that. This, this is sort of like a chorus effect. This makes an interesting chorus type of effect. Since the LFO is polyphonic, we can modulate its parameters so that each voice you play will have a different LFO rate. And that will give a different chorusing effect for each voice, which will sound different than if you were just to play the sound through a, a chorus plugin. So I'm gonna add some randomness to the LFO rate. This will make each voice have a different LFO rate and thus a different coursing effect. It means each note is going to have a different chorus type of effect. We could also control the depth of LFO modulation. I right click on depth. We could control this with velocity. So there's, um, when I play soft, there's not much, there's not much chorus effect. And as I play loud, it, it becomes more prominent. So that's starting to sound um, kind of pretty, more interesting. And let's try controlling high frequency damping with the mod wheel. So you have all the um, MIDI controls on the right here, and I will just turn this up all the way. And I'm gonna turn up high frequency damping. When it's all the way down, when the mod wheel is turned down, it sounds bright. As I turn it up. more dynamic and we can go much further than this we've only used two modules so far uh, we have not touched the oscillators or the noise generator or the ladder filter or the saturation module we haven't turned on the effects one last thing I want to do I want to show how you can make this rhythmic impulse has a this mysterious T button and this is for the trigger source. Right now it's set to note on. You could also set it to note release, which adds a little noise at the end of the note. That's kind of interesting. But what we could also do is turn on one of these pulse modules. They're in the trigger menu on the right. So much more we could do with this patch, but I think this is enough for one video. It's gone on a bit longer than I'd intended. So thank you very much for watching.